Cursor 2.0 just dropped and it's packed with new features. I've tested them all and I'm ranking the five actually worth using from least to most useful. Let's start with number five. Cursor 2.0 included a new in-house developed coding model named Composer. It's advertised as being very fast and just slightly behind the current frontier models in terms of intelligence. These are just Cursor's own in-house benchmarks. Let's test it out. I like testing new coding models with tasks that are non-trivial, but somewhat vague, giving the model space to show what it can do. Let's select Composer 1 and use the prompt, build a color picker component. It definitely lives up to the speed promises. This is blazingly fast, the fastest coding model I've ever seen. And speed matters if you're using the model as an assistant, keeps you engaged and in flow for longer stretches. It built this working color picker in one shot, which is impressive. I do see some small issues though. These sliders aren't labeled, and the selection circle is kind of half cut off here. Also, I think they're stacked too close to each other vertically. Here's what Claude Sonnet 4.5 produced with exactly the same prompt. I don't have the issues I had with the one Composer did. Plus, it's just a nicer implementation. It's even given me some features here where I can add a saved color. I can copy the clipboard, the hex value of the color. You can start to see the problem with using a coding model that lags on intelligence even just slightly. You start accumulating small deficiencies that compound as you keep prompting. And that's why I'm ranking Composer last in the usefulness for the big new Cursor 2 features. On the cost, speed, quality triangle, you need to lean hard on quality, especially if you're not an experienced developer. I should also mention that Composer has semantic search capabilities that should work very well for large code bases, but I'm still experimenting with that, and I'll cover that in more in a future video. This is a huge accomplishment for Cursor. It's great to have a new coding model in the marketplace. It's only gonna get better from here. A core feature of Cursor 2.0 is the ability to run AI agents in parallel without them interfering with each other. This is perfect for comparing multiple models on the same task. See which one gives you the best result. It does this using Git work trees, which creates separate working copies of your code base. You can make changes in parallel without file conflicts. In the agent view, if you have a Git repo initialized, you can now run up to four models at the same time. Let's try running two in parallel. I'm gonna select Sonnet 4.5 and also GPT-5 Codex. And both will use the same prompt, add ability to drag an image, and let me use an eyedropper to select the color from the image. Now we see cursor has added the work tree for 4.5 Sonnet coding on this side, and then in parallel, it's got one for GPT-5 Codex. It's doing its implementation on this side, including creating to-do lists and everything we would do normally with an agent. Now it's just doing it twice, one for each model. And for each of these, it gives us a work tree name. And then you see the five capital letters at the end of each one, and that's the unique identifier for each work tree. Now they're both done, and Sonnet finished in about half the time. But from here, you can review the code changes in the editor for each one. And use the tile to switch to the different model runs. One area I think needs improvement, though, it's hard to keep track of which work tree maps to which code, maps to which model. And this is just with two running. Imagine if you have four. But I'm sure more improvements to the UI are coming. And if I open up the two implementations, I think Sonnet did a better job. It's got this nice magnifying glass. Well, GPT-5 didn't have that. It just had a crosshair. But here's the problem. Without actually running both implementations and looking at the code of each, it's kind of hard to tell which is truly better. Like maybe GPT-5 has some logic that's cleaner under the hood. What this feature really needs is an AI judge that can evaluate all the different runs and compare for the best solution. Right now, you're left manually evaluating multiple implementations and multiple sets of code, which is powerful for experimentation, but for day-to-day -day work, it's a bit too time-consuming. Building in a team, you usually do peer code reviews. This is to catch catch bugs with a fresh set of eyes, and also make sure the whole team is familiar with the code base. Cursor 2 has agent review, which tries to accomplish the same thing with AI. Now that I want to go with Sonnet's implementation, I can open up the source control panel and click on this new find issues button. This puts cursor in a specialized mode focused on catching bugs in the diffs before you actually do the commit. In this case, it found a valid bug. The clear image function should also deactivate the eyedrop. I can see in the code where the bug is. And now if I say fix all, it's going to put the bug report with all the details into the chat so I can just have it fixed automatically for me. Now, if I remove the image, the crosshair goes away. Agent review just prevented that bug from being committed to my code and saved me the hassle of having to create an issue ticket for it later. It's not perfect though. I did spot another bug where if you pick the color, the magnifying glass can disappear so you can't see it anymore. The canvas should be expanded so you can always see the magnifying glass. But still, it's an extremely useful extra check. And cursor added a setting to start agent review on commit so you can have it run automatically. As the saying goes, a little bit of planning goes a long way. And that's especially true in AI software development. Cursor 2.0 has planning mode baked in, and I really like how they implemented it. Let's switch from agent mode to plan mode and give it a complex prompt. 
Build a real-time expense splitting app like Splitwise. And it'll include some detailed requirements, such as the ability to create groups, different split types, and then specify technology stack. So I want this built with Next.js. I want to use Superbase for the backend. And then in most cases, plan mode will come back with a series of questions that really help it understand what exactly you want. And I like the way they're multiple choice, just letting you know what the options are. I also find the questions themselves can kind of guide my thinking and let me know what's possible. Now it's built our plan. And one thing I really like about Cursor's implementation of this, you can easily save this markdown file to workspace, which saves it to dot cursor slash plans and then puts a markdown file in there. And I can refer to it at any time in the future. And now we can see the advantages of plan mode. First, we get the data model up front, so we're not making it up as we go. It also gives us a consistent approach to building UI components. You don't have to implement the entire plan at once. I can just tell it to start just with the UI and test data, but because that plan is saved to that markdown file, we can always refer back to it for next steps. I'd recommend using plan mode for any new application or major feature. It keeps the AI from going off the rails. One thing I've noticed with AI coding is generally better at backend logic than front-end UIs. I think a big part of that is that UI work is just hard to describe in natural language. Cursor 2 has a new feature that goes a long way towards fixing this. An agent can now fully control a browser. We're gonna ask it to start a dev server and open the cursor browser. Now this agent totally controls this browser, so I can just say, test this application inventory what's working. And so now we can not just take screenshots and navigate around, but we can also check the console logs, map out exactly what's working and what isn't. And then in less than a minute, it's given me the 600 line testing inventory markdown file, listing what's already been done, what mock data is available, no limitations, testing checklist with everything it did. And even based on that testing of the next steps, you also get the ability to select elements directly. Now you don't have to take screenshots. I can show cursor exactly what element I'm referring to. If you choose select element, let me select these cards. It puts that reference in the chat. Now I can say, make these member cards interactive. When I hover over a card, it should lift up slightly with a shadow effect. And now it implements that very quickly. This makes UI coding so much faster. Agent on the left, live UI on the right. It also gives cursor access to dev tools. So it can read console logs, read network logs, and just all around make the agent much more autonomous. If you want to stay up to date on the latest in AI software development, subscribe to our newsletter, the AI Unleash News. I'll let you know what's real and what's just hype. First link in the description, I hope to see you there. Cursor 2.0 is a bigger leap forward than it might seem on the surface. These capabilities, parallel agents, browser control, plan mode, this is giving Cursor real autonomous capability. We're moving into territory where AI can actually manage a complex development workflow. And then building their own model composer, that's really strategic because right now, most AI coding tools are shipping all the revenue they have over to OpenAI or Anthropic. Cursor building Composer means they can actually potentially control their costs and their roadmap. If you want to stay updated on the latest in AI coding tools, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I hope you're having an amazing day. I'll talk to you in the next one.